Good morning, Cleveland County. On a beautiful July day, we're here at Barry Bingham's Farms with Lana, Lana with Lana, who is a year and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half years old. She's come to find out she's probably the only one who is the intern at your farm, That's and we're correct. and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But guess what? We're going to be showing you rutabagas. Whoever knew they even grew in Cleveland County? Barry has an amazing farm. He's got a greenhouse, which we'll show you pictures of uh, before we conclude here. And uh, Barry, I want you to talk number one about how you got started in farming. Well, I was born into a farm family. Uh, my, my parents always had a, a garden, big garden. Uh, Dad grew, had uh, dairy cattle and uh, beef cattle and soybeans and small grains, hay crops. Uh, so there was field work and there was garden work. Mom always had beans and peas and greens. Oh, sure. So Almost subsistence farming on your part. You had to be sustainable. Uh -huh. uh, people are used to the supermarkets and... Uh, milk comes from a supermarket, not a cow, for most people. So, exactly. Uh, we had a cow, and we had a garden, and every, you know, freezer, and canning, and. So really, that's how you learned to do all of this. Yes. Uh, is is your upbringing? Right. I I hated it when I was growing up. My back always hurt picking beans. Right. So I went off to college, and I was like, that's done. A, that's done with that. With. You know, worked for a few years back in 2000. When As I a civil engineer? Civil engineer. Okay. Yeah. And then after I got established there, then, uh, you know, my mom always gave me a can of green beans and something you know, to eat once sure. in a while. And I was like, I've got to learn how to do this myself. Mom's not always going to be there. Right. So around 2000, I started growing a little garden back there in the back section, just a little small area. Uh -huh. I was amazed how much better to grow a small garden because I can produce more in a small garden than well, a I've spread out. Well, absolutely. And you are absolutely spread out, folks. This is just unbelievable. Well, now tell me, tell us about rutabagas. These are rutabagas, and uh, I got some uh, American Purple Top rutabagas from uh, southern states. And uh, it's the same bag I bought then is what I'm using now. I just put it back in the freezer. I get a few seeds. There's enough there for a while. Oh. needs to be thinned. Uh, yeah, but these, these I, I folks, I didn't spread these that. things are huge, huge. And Barry has cut off some. That's what it looks like. Now, the amazing thing about a rutabaga is that it is a cross between a turnip, which most of you know what that looks like, and a cabbage. That's correct. Rutabaga. Who knew? And the uh, he's chipped these up, and ah! Uh, they're a little older now, so they're not quite as sweet. Right. But they would be, you know, eating like candy, these little shades of candy. Normally you can grow them early in the spring or late in the fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when it's late in the fall, and these things are, are, you see them, they're probably going to be covered with a wax. Is that right? Have, have you seen them that I way? I've seen it that way. I have. I'm from South Dakota, and I knew what a rutabaga was because we grow them up in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. But in the fall, you'll find them covered in wax because that helps them be able to be viable, and you can eat them. Stay in the ground? Well, no, yeah. on the shelf. Okay. That's what preserves them is when they're, when they're covered in wax. Okay. But anyway... Um, any tips on, well, and of course I'm amazed that you have seeds from southern states purchased in 2000? 2000? 2014. 2014. Most seed will save it if you put it in the freezer. You know, I've got a, That's a helpful hint. section in my freezer where I store all my seed, either purchased or seed I saved from heirloom. Okay. Wow. And folks, he is not only in or having his wares at the farmer's market in Shelby, but you also supply 
I'm trying to feed the hungry in Gaston, Cleveland, and Rutherford County. <laughs> Rutherford County. And so far, I've been successful because I always bring produce back. I never sell out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and you, of course, you're you're here at the farmers market on Saturday. Every Saturday that the farmers market's open. I try to be. If mm -hmm. I've got produce, and so far this right. year. Right. Oh, I love you, <laughs> All right, my. Um, well, uh, I think we're going to cut our conversation, and we're going to still use some of the time allotted for our part. Sure. Uh, showing the greenhouse. High tunnel. And high, high tunnel. Sophisticated name for a greenhouse. High tunnel. But you've got your windows open, so it's not really like a greenhouse. It's a curtain. And it's that's beautiful yes and it's like looking in I mean all of the produce that we'll be showing you um, you will have to have advantage and be sure to take advantage of at the farmers market. Well, it should be in there when it's raining. You, there's no bad weather in a hot tunnel. You can always weed and always pick. Oh, of course. Oh, but mentioning that, you would also like to encourage some people to start to learn how to farm. Correct. Barry has a need for interns. Interns. I need one for planting, one for weeding, and one for picking. One for picking. And those three things can happen all at the same time. That's Am correct. I correct? That's correct. Otherwise, it's just him doing that and managing to sell to you all. So if you have any young people, you can contact Barry. How? Email address is dollardownfarm at gmail.com. Okay. And the phone number is 704 473 All you need to know to get some young people out of the house and into the garden. Stay tuned. We're going to talk to Nancy Abasi Akong about why we need to eat rutabagas. Hold on to your popcorn. It's time for the 19th Annual Reel to Reel International Film Festival. The lights go down July 25th through the 28th at the Joy Performance Center in Kings Mountain. Sponsored by the Cleveland County Arts Council, Reel to Reel offers a forum for independent filmmakers from around the world to showcase their talents. And on Saturday at 10 a.m., Kid Senses brings you Kids Fest with films made by kids 14 and under. You don't want to miss the 19th Annual Reel to Reel International Film Festival, July 25th through the 28th at the Joy Performance Center in Kings Mountain. Only two years until graduation, then what? The Advanced Manufacturing Academy is a partnership between Cleveland County Schools and Cleveland Community College. It offers you, rising 11th graders, the chance to learn job skills, earn valuable credentials, and complete your high school studies all at the same time. By completing the Advanced Manufacturing Academy, you'll graduate high school ready to start work at way above minimum wage. Check out the Academy and give yourself a head start on a great future. There's a new way to help save the environment while getting rid of your everyday waste. It's part of Shelby's new curbside recycling program. It's quick, easy, and something so simple that even little recyclers can help go green. Single stream recycling makes it easy so we can all do our part and do the right thing. Register at RecycleShelby.com. Once you do that, you can roll these city-issued bins out to the curb. Don't worry, we'll take care of the rest. Recycle Shelby, it's the right... Hi, Cleveland County. Welcome back. We've just been to the farm to see where rutabagas are growing. And we're now in the studio with Nancy abassi Kong. Uh, a family and consumer sciences Thank employee you. of County Extension. <laughs> I can change that oh, up. Okay. But thank you. Mm, yeah. So we're here uh, to talk about why in the world we need to eat a rutabaga. Yes. And they really are packed with a lot of good nutrition. Oh. There are many reasons to be eating rutabagas, although they are not one that we typically are not one of our common vegetables in this area. Right. Uh, but they are what we would again call nutrient dense uh, because they have so many vitamins and minerals and um, even uh, high in vitamin C, 
vitamin uh, A, calcium, iron, some of the B, vitamin, B, B vitamins, magnesium, so all kinds of, of good things for us and things that our bodies need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and of course, what amazed me was to find out that a rutabaga is a cross between a turnip and cabbage. And, cabbage. and I'm trying to find where the cabbage is in all this plant, but um, anyway, it's, it's the size would be like a cabbage. Because mm -hmm. turnips, well, of course, some turnips get great big too, but. Right, and really, if you're going to be eating uh, rutabagas and you want uh, a more delicate flavor, certainly if you're going to eat them raw, which they can be eaten right, raw, right. then you would want to select a smaller size, uh, like a three, three to five inch diameter, uh, something like that. Well, there, um, there'd be no way for you to know, but when we were on the farm, um, the farmer actually gave me some and I was eating the little mm -hmm. pieces of it raw on camera. So, okay. Yes, and, and that would probably be the best, most nutritious way to eat. Probably most anything is raw. Uh, yes, well, some things are improved with, with, cooking, with cooking, but, oh, okay. but certainly this is a good way. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to add them to salads or uh, do a slaw, you could grate it and put it in a slaw. Of course. Or um, you can even uh, put it in uh, pancakes or make a rutabaga cake like we would a carrot cake. Yes. So some things that we don't typically think about for this vegetable that as you say is a cross between a cabbage and a turnip uh -huh. but it is more it is sweeter than a turnip. Yes. Not, yes. As, not as peppery. That's correct. And also the color you know a turnip usually would be white mm -hmm. on the inside mm -hmm. and rutabagas would be uh, more of a yellowish kind of a Orange color. Orange so, type color. Right yellow to orange, mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of difference there, uh, but you can prepare them um, like you would potatoes. Right. Uh, you can mix them with potatoes, and especially if we're trying to maybe introduce that as a new vegetable mm -hmm. to our families, mm -hmm. we can uh, cook just cubed uh, rutabagas with our regular potatoes, mash that okay. you know, for our mashed potatoes. Okay. Which would maybe lend it have like the potatoes would have a lot more like a golden color because a little of bit this? more color and uh -huh. but certainly more nutrition. Oh now, yeah. Now potatoes have their own potato. nutrition, but but you rutabagas are less starchy. Yes. And have um, again a lot of these other vitamins and minerals that potatoes don't have. Of course. So when we put them together, and of course fiber, we would be getting some fiber, mm -hmm. which is something that we need and we look to. Uh, when we're eating uh, vegetables, mm -hmm. fresh or cooked, either one. Well, and also, you, we can eat the greens of the rutabagas mm -hmm. as well, just like we can eat turnip greens, I, I assume. That's right, yes, mm -hmm. you can eat the greens, uh, although they're not usually eaten, not as much as turnip greens or mustard and that kind of thing, but they are edible, uh -huh. and you can certainly um, either cook them or saute them, or add them into your salads or whatever. A little bit on the taste of uh, cabbage. Oh, um, oh, well, a there similar we go. Yes. taste uh, like a cabbage. Of course. So when we're thinking about the flavor profiles uh, and what we're getting from what, mm -hmm. then to just know what to expect there. Um, but again, the, the whole thing is, is edible. Well, and of that, course they're waxed if you buy them in the well, store. Well, yes, and we were talking, and this would be like in the winter time, in the fall, that's when you would see these waxed rutabagas. Right. Well, if you find them in the grocery, even now, they are waxed. Oh, okay. So for, and that's paraffin wax. Right. But to preserve the moisture, to help keep them the moisture in, okay. uh, they do wax them. And, of course, they will, they will last a long time uh, in cool, uh, like in a cool storage area or in your refrigerator. Right. Uh, if you put them in the refrigerator, put them in a plastic bag and just in your uh, vegetable drawer. Okay. And they will last, you know, for a long for time. For a long time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And, well, and it's always bothered me, like, I mean, if you buy one that has this paraffin on it, do you just pare it off like you would a carrot or potato or something? Yes, yes. The wax okay. doesn't hurt the, the food. It's a food grade uh, wax, so it's okay. But anything that's grown underground, go ahead and use your vegetable brush 
to thoroughly clean it. Okay. Before even before you peel it, you're going to peel it, but you want to get that dirt off and, okay. and any uh, other bacteria or anything that might be there. So just use your vegetable brush, brush that uh, clean, okay. and then yes, just peel it. Okay. You can cut off the top and the bottom, set it squarely, so you want it to sit firmly and straight. Right, on the uh, cutting board. On your cutting board, board. Okay. yes. It's a hard, dense vegetable. Right. So use a cutting board okay. in order to, for safety. Right. And then just once you've cut across the top, you can use your knife and just peel around okay. the sides with a nice sharp knife. Okay, so, right. Or you could, after you cut the top and the bottom off, put it in a, a microwavable dish microwave it for three to five minutes and that will soften it and you can just almost scrape it off. I mean, you know, it oh, peels Nancy. off much easier. And what but, would that do to the paraffin? Um, well, it, it doesn't hurt it again, okay. but you, it's not hard to peel okay. if you get it to where it sits level. Right. And then again, just shave right around the sides and just keep rotating. And, um, and, 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 and we would do that anyway, even if we just got, had the, like the vegetable pulled out of the garden. Right. We still do that. Yes, and okay. usually that tap root and the greens are already off right. by the time we see Wait, it. Correct. Uh, so it, but that, that top area is where you're going to cut, and then you would peel it the same mm -hmm. if you're going to mm -hmm. just peel it fresh, or if it has been waxed again, so that it stays um, a nice moist uh, product for us. Well, thank you, Nancy, very much for your expert information, and you now know why you have to eat, why you should eat a rutabaga, and you don't even have to be able to spell rutabaga to enjoy it. It starts with an R. There's a G in there, rutabaga. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a G in there. But anyway, just have lots of fun with that. Stay tuned. We're going to cook rutabagas. Be a part of building the future. Be a welder. The welding technology program at Cleveland Community College prepares you with the science, the technology, and the skills to be a successful welder. Experienced instructors using state-of-the-art equipment train students using industry standard skills developed through classroom training and practical application. Successful graduates are in high demand and are employed as entry-level technicians in welding and metalworking industries. Learn more. Call Cleveland Community College at 704-669-4077. Hi, I'm Jennifer Harrell, your host for Fur Your Information. It's provided to entertain and educate you about all things pet throughout Cleveland County. We have various hosts join me each month on the show to talk about dogs, cats, reptiles, snakes, and even horses. But we want you to stick through to the second half of the show because then we will have pets live on our set that you can adopt to be a part of your forever family. Fur your information once a month on C19 TV and online at C19.TV. Hi Cleveland County, welcome back. Well, we're in the kitchen cooking and you know what we're cooking, rutabagas. These are the most beautiful rutabagas from the farmer. This is one, that's how it looks like, in the ground. And actually this part usually sticks up above the ground a little bit. All right, I am here today with Tommy Green, our favorite chef, and he is going to cook greens for us. The greens of the rutabaga are edible as well as the root part. So here we go, let's, let's do the greens, Tommy. And then we're just going to trim one up. We've already done some more because we've had the pot of greens going. And I believe, Tommy, you're using your collard recipe yes. that we did maybe last year sometime Yes. Uh, for the rutabaga greens. Remember, the rutabaga is a cross between a turnip, which it actually looks like, pretty much, and the cabbage. So the leaves are edible, the root is edible. All right, so you see he's, and what he's done, he's cut this stem part out. That's very tough to eat. And we've already got the pot of greens going. 
there's fat back in there. We're pouring in chicken juice. It's, it's uh, salt pork. Salt pork. Onions and garlic. Onions and, and hot sauce. And hot sauce. And uh, a little salt and a little pepper. And then chicken broth. Right. And we cook it for about an hour and a half. And then the last six or eight minutes, we put uh, apple cider vinegar and white wine. And a little white wine. Mm hmm. All right. Do you drink any of that? Don't answer. No. All right, Tommy. Um, okay, that, that's probably good enough. That's good enough. Now, I want you to show the people how we take their outer skin of this rutabaga off. So you just take a regular, vegetable, what do you call that? Vegetable peeler. Vegetable peeler. And just get that rough outer coating off. Now, while he's doing that, I want to also tell you, in the fall, you'll see rutabagas in the grocery store, but they'll be coated in wax. That's to preserve them. Um, so just remember that when you see these type of vegetable in the store in the wintertime. All right, Tommy, that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay, that's just a demonstration. Now, what? let's put together, let's drain the... Well, and you've, I guess you've just done this and... Cut it in half. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's an effort here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, but there we go. That's a little better. And then I would assume you do some cubes like that. Yes. Sort of like that. All right. So we've already done that. In the interest of time, we've poured that in the pot. We've cooked that. We've boiled it, right? Right. Okay, so now you we're boil, going... Boil it for 35 minutes. Okay. And then you pour the water off, put it back on the heat to make all the water evaporate. Right. And then finish it off with whipping cream, butter, and uh, thyme. Okay, you've got your rubber gloves on. That yeah. kind of makes that's that difficult it difficult does. to do, Tommy. That sure all does. Right. All right, so we're going to... Uh, okay, here we go. All right, drain all that. Drain up. all that. That's good and hot. Okay, back in the pot, back in the pot, all right, that's okay, oh, good, 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 and that is how many cups of, of rutabaga? It's four pounds. Four pounds, all yes. right, Woo. so I, and actually, I want you all to know, you can eat this raw. Mmm. Like a turnip, like a turnip. All right, so we've got the heat on. Yes. And it's evaporating, uh-huh. Okay, heat on, evaporation going on. Because you want them dry enough so you don't have the water in the, in the liquid, is that Correct. right? Correct, okay. yes. So that it is warm enough to melt the butter. Heavy cream, am I correct? Yes. This one fell out. Mm. Even better cooked, but I will eat them raw. All right. And that's probably time. Okay. How much butter? Five tablespoons of butter. Okay. Oh, you know butter makes anything better. And a third cup of uh, heavy whipping cream. Third of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Mmm. and a tablespoon of chopped fresh thyme. Okay. Do you have that growing in your window, Tommy? I have it growing in my garden. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. All right, and then the tools of the trade. Get all that yep. mixed in, get the butter melted and the cream soaked up by the turnip. Keep stirring, keep stirring. I'll pick, I'll grab that. Okay. I'll grab that, I'll eat that. Mm. Now, okay. Meanwhile, while this was boiling originally, then I used the pears, I peeled them and chopped them into small pieces. And then also I did some uh, ginger, chopped it and put uh, lemon juice uh, and the 
uh, sugar. Okay. And in, in the in in this pan in, and mi mixed it all up. These are anjou pears, by right. the way. I would imagine, and I know the recipe calls for that, but you could probably use like the the pears that that grow around here wild. Yes. I bet you could use those too. Oh, so yeah. whatever you have on hand. But this has taken, what, 35 minutes to cook yes. approximately? Yes. And every 10 minutes, you're supposed to scoopy doop around it, whoa, around in here and stir them up, stick them back in the oven. Here, it gets another piece. Mmm. Another piece. So these we did beforehand because we only have 10 minutes for this part of the show. So we have to do some things ahead of time. Right. All right. Then you put the pears. In with the rutabaga. And Tommy, I'm, I'm going to help hold this. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and be sure that you get as much of the juice, the lemon juice and sugar, with the pears. Okay. And it will make the dish a lot better, a lot sweeter. Oh, sure, of course, of course. And I would think it would depend on the kind of pears you have, too. Yeah. Okay, all right. Scoopy doo, scoopy doo. All right, that's great, 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 great. That's perfect. That I, I get the dregs. Okay. I get to clean up. <laughs> All right. Now then, what's next? I need to get have, these. Oh, up. have you mashed? No, do no you, you don't, don't, ma you don't ma mash those. Oh, no. that's a good point. We mash up the rutabagas. Right. And then we pour in the pears. And, and then mix. we actually have the dish prepared. And I am going to... See if my cord gets over here. And that is what the dish looks like right there. It's got the, it's the pears are, the pears are the chunky things and there's the mash, like mashed potatoes, but it's right. mashed rutabagas. Yes. How are our greens coming? They're coming along fine. Good uh, deal. What, where's your, there's your spoon. Okay. Now, when do you add the vinegar and the wine? The last six or eight minutes. Okay, have we been timing? No. Well, we'll approximate. It's been about six minutes, I would think. Yeah. So, but we could actually put those in right now, could we not? Yes, we can. All right, well then let's just do that. And then, and, but we have to sh have something that we can look at the greens on, right? When you yeah. pour them out? <laughs> um, well, we will just, um, Actually, here, here's a little plate right over here. Oh, uh, oh. That was the white wine. And then oh, the white wine. Now okay. I'm putting apple cider vinegar in. All right. And? It's a cup of white wine and a half cup of apple cider vinegar. Okay, a cup of wine and a cup of vinegar. Okay. Now, can we stir that around yes. and then we're going to present it on a little plate? All right, this looks terrific. It will be terrific. Oh, oh I don't that, want to stop. Oh. That. Okay, all right, good, 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 good. Let's have one more scoopy doop. All right, perfect. Voila. Rutabagas mashed up with greens. Doesn't get much better than that, nor much more healthy. Tommy, dear, thank you. Say bye to your viewers. Goodbye. Thank you so much. See you next month.